Analogic reasoning and the fallacies associated with it. Analogical reasoning is a very useful tool in making speeches. I will give you a definition of analogic reasoning, then an example of it, and then I will give factors affecting the strength of analogical arguments and some fallacies of analogical reasoning to avoid. In the Encyclopedia of Cognitive Science, Professor Deidre Gettner wrote, Analogical reasoning is a kind of reasoning that applies between specific cases in which what is known about one is used to infer new information about another. The basic intuition behind analogical reasoning is that when there are substantial parallels across different situations, there are likely to be further parallels. An example of analogic reasoning is that humans and rats share a lot of the same biological traits. Therefore, if a drug has certain effects in rats, good or bad, it's likely to have the same effects in humans, and that is the basis for drug testing. According to Gettner, evaluating an analogy involves at least three kinds of judgment. Structural soundness, whether comparison is consistent in a number of characteristics. Factual correctness, whether the inferences are true or false. And relevance, whether the analogical inferences are relevant to the current goals. Now, some fallacies associated with analogical reasoning. Uh, John Stuart Mill, in A System of Logic, defined the fallacy of false analogies as when resemblance in one point is inferred from resemblance in another point, though there is not only no evidence to connect the two circumstances by way of causation, but the evidence leads positively to disconnect them. And as an example of a bad analogy, he gives a watch which is made by an intelligent designer. Watches are complex. The universe is also complex. Therefore, the universe is made by an intelligent designer. This is a false analogy because it leaves out a lot of things, like the fact that there's other complex things that aren't intelligently designed, like snowflakes. Now, Trudy Grover, in her textbook, A Practical Study of Argument, gives the following fallacies. Now, the first two are examples of uh, fallacy of slippery slope, which she breaks into fallacy of slippery assimilation, an argument based on the logical error of assuming that because cases can be arranged in a series, there's, where the difference between successive members of the series is small, the cases should all be assimilated. This is a mistaken appeal to consistency. It ignores the fact that small differences can accumulate to be significant. Then there's the fallacy of slippery precedent, an argument based on claiming that an action, though good, should be permitted, not be permitted, because it will set a precedent of further similar actions that are bad. Such arguments are flawed in that they use implicitly inconsistent premises. A good action cannot be relevantly similar to the bad action. Therefore, there must be some relevant difference between them. A fallacy of two wrongs make a right. A mistaken referring that because two wrong things are similar and one is tolerated, the other should be tolerated as well. This sort of argument needs uses to be appealed to consistency. This fallacy is often simply called Two wrongs. Faulty analogy, named for a fallacious argument in which the analogy is so loose and remote that there is virtually no support for the conclusion. So I've given you a definition for analogic reasoning, then an example. I gave you the factors affecting the strength of analogical arguments and some fallacies to avoid. Now you can use analogical reasoning in your own speeches.